Hello and welcome to this video on window pulls. Um, there are basically three types of window pulls uh, that you need to do. Um, one is for uh, the view through the window itself, the obvious window pull. Uh, the second one is for the view through blinds, which is slightly different. And the third one is through net curtains, um, again, which can be slightly different. So I wanted to just give examples with not high end property and sort of show off a bit, but just go for everyday property that uh, photographers are doing on houses every day and make it a bit more relatable to what you do on a day to day basis. Um, so this first example is a three bed ex council house. Um, it's a mid terrace on a, on a regular ex council estate. It's in quite good condition and uh, well cared for, thankfully. So it's quite a good example to use. If we go through the film strip, we're in Lightroom at the moment. This is the ambient shot. Um, we're shooting at one tenth of a second on f7.1. We've got the 17 tilt shift lens on and we're ISO 320. The blue shot here, this one, is the flash shot. So we're up now at 1/80th of a second, so we're three stops different. So if you take one tenth of a second, double it, that's 1/20th. Double it again is 1/40th. Double it again is 1/80th, so we're three stops down. And uh, we've uh, put the flash into the shot. It's um, slightly yellow. Um, we might have to uh, do a bit of correction on that before we use it. The next shot is the window pull. Now the flash is stronger now. And we're down at 1 200th of a second rather than 1 80th. But I have got, as a consequence, a reflection of the flash going on in the window generally across. It's uh, a little bit murky from it. So because of that, I've then taken what we call a repair layer. So this is the same exposure, but without the flash. And it's done on the bracket because I'm too lazy to take it off. So this is the actual shot that we're going to use, this middle shot. So it's 1 200th of a second again there on uh, f7.1 on 320 still i haven't changed the iso didn't need to so we'll pick these four shots and take those into photoshop alt p e o o over into photoshop now just loading in so it loads the repair layer in first then the window pull then the flash shot and now the ambient shot I'm just uh, I'm happy with the ambient shot. The flash shot is a little bit yellow, so I'm just going to dehaze that a little bit. So drop down onto that layer, onto that image. Go. Uh, image, adjust, color match, and just neutralize it. On the back of that, you notice it's gone whiter. This is a white painted room with that color. Carpet is accurate. This chair color is accurate. The blue cushion's accurate. All the colors have come good. So, uh, and then the, so the first thing I'm going to do is do a flash ambient blend on it. So if we take the uh, layer on the top, the ambient layer, change that to luminosity mode, and then put in a 50-50 balance on the opacity slider, then we've got a flash ambient blend going on. A bit of detail coming to the window compared to the ambient shot, but not enough to make it good. So we've got the flash shot here, um, again, strictly speaking, we should match that with the luminosity, although outside can look a bit more yellow. So I've got to toss up as to whether I get the window frame accurate or whether I get the outside accurate. I'm going to go for making the window frame accurate. So I'm going to do the same routine on that as image, adjust, come down to color match and just neutralize that again for a moment. And that's looking good there. OK, now. I put the other two layers back on. So that's my flash ambient blend showing on top. I'm going to put my window layer, put it on the top, put a hide all mask on it. So press Alt and add layer mask. And that gives me a hide mask. I want to pick a brush. So B for brush, it's already on it. It's a 600, it's a 600 size brush at full flow. I want my foreground color as white. And you can toggle that either by clicking on this little angle with the arrows on alternatively you can do it by pressing x so we want it white on the foreground which is the upper one here and then we'll just paint on where we want the window pull so pull it through there and that's all coming good now just got a bit more color going into these curtains as well that's looking smart 
excellent just along there as well looking great now I have got this flash reflection going on in this window which I'm not particularly happy with and this is why I've got the repair layer here so we take the repair layer to the top Actually, I've missed a tiny bit on that uh, bit there, which is just somewhere in there. There it is. There, it's there. Got it. Right, okay, go back and bring the repair layer up. And on this one, we're going to use the polygonal lasso. So I want to put a layer mask on again. So Alt and click on the mask to get a hide or mask. Go to the polygonal lasso here. And we're going to click just inside The window we don't have to be terribly accurate because we've got a bit to play with and press shift to do the second selection get the plus sign up okay, from here we've got the rubber rim running around the window frame which is quite useful for doing these and bring it up to there again it's just inside a few pixels to spare and then shift again and do this one down to there, across to here, and then roughly on the inside of the curtain, nothing too accurate. Doesn't have to be super, super accurate because you just don't need to do it. You've already got the other window pool working that bit. Um, it's sensible to put a feather on this selection. So we're going to go to select, modify, feather by five pixels, OK. And on the back of that, that's ready to make the selection. So to do that, you flip the foreground color from white to black and press delete bang in it goes straight away um, I'm going to get rid of the selection because it just irritates me with the marching ants around it so I'll do control D to get rid of that it's a little bit dark so I'm going to go back into the repair layer and just lighten it a little bit so go to image adjustments brighten and I'm just going to lift that by probably 15 18 somewhere around there that's looking good about there so I take that as okay that's looking spot on take shift control and E to flatten the layer control s to save it back into Lightroom and it'll just come back into Lightroom now for us in a second here we go and then it's looking slightly dull so I'm just going to give it a bump light bump bang here we go and that's ready for exporting shift control e jobs done i'll drop that down just so you can look at the image a bit more actually what we'll do is we'll blow it up a bit so you can see it in detail along here you can see where the old and the new are so if you look very closely along here you can see that this very outer rim is slightly brighter than the inner one it's hard to spot it you can just spot it here you can just spot it here um, but it's really really you, you can see the difference just here look so there's the original pull here's the restoration there's the original pull here's the restoration looking good that, um, pretty smart and that's that one concluded uh, next we'll go on and do one for net curtains and then finally we'll do one for blinds So this is an example for net curtains. Now, um, again, we're using everyday property here. So um, we're in Lightroom. The five green labeled shots along here are a bracket of five. We're going to use the middle one. So this is shot at half a second, at F7.1. We've got the 17 tilt shift lens on again, and we're at ISO 320. The next three shots, are all flash shots this is my test flash shot which is too light uh, sorry uh, not bright enough rather I beg your pardon too dark um, this is the one that we're actually going to use and the next one up was a bit too bright so uh, we'll skip that one we'll pick the one in the middle which is that one the three purple shots are the shots I was using to get the window pulls done the first one is again underpowered so we're going to skip that one the next one is the left window pull and that's looking quite good and the final one is the right window pull you can see the flash move left to right on these two and we're going to use that as well so if we take those four and throw them across into Photoshop 
So Alt P E O O again. So open as layers in Photoshop, hit enter. And it's just going to load those into Photoshop now. So there's the right hand window pull, the left hand window pull. They come in reverse order. This is the flash shot and this is the ambient shot. So the first thing we need to do is align them. Um, I've shown you how to do that manually on the earlier clip. So I have an action for that, which is F2. So I'll just use that now. So the auto line is just doing its thing now. It's all done. They were out fractionally. You can see the uh, dotted line of the background just down here. It's very marginal though. It's pretty good. Right, so the ambient shot, we're just going to do a luminosity blend on that. Um, as we're not in a yeah, video on how to do luminosity blend, so I'm just going to put that into an action. So it's F7, that's that done. And then the window pulls, this is the important bit. So on, I'm just going to blank out the uh, the main image. They're looking a bit yellow to me. Um, um, they need cleaning up a little bit and they're a little bit dull. So I'm just going to go across into image adjustments. I'm going to come down to color match. I'm going to drop the color intensity down to about 70 odd and lift the luminosity a tad. Now if you look at that window, that's much better for the cleanliness and the brightness of the net curtain. So 116 on luminance, 72 on color intensity. Take that. And for the one below, we're going to put it to exactly the same level. So we go to the one below, go image, adjust, color match, 110 odd, 75 odd, somewhere around there. That's close enough. So they're now looking good. There's the left hand one. There's the right hand one. So those are good. This is the flash ambient blend from before. So we'll take the left hand window and we'll put it on the top. We'll take the luminosity, sorry, not luminosity. We'll put a mask on there. So it's add layer mask, alt and delete it. Um, make it a blank layer mask or a hidden all layer mask rather. Come across to the brush. So hit B for brush and make sure our foreground color is white. Hit X to toggle that, so make that white. Go over to this left hand window and paint our window pull in. That's that there. It's still a little bit on the dark side. And do the same for the, I'm just going to reverse the color and just take a bit off that curtain because it's just a little bit dark on the curtain. And then go down to the left hand, right hand window pull, take that up to the top. Oops, I beg your pardon, take that up to the top. Put a hide all mask on there and then use the brush to paint that one in. So toggle back to white for the foreground color and paint that in as your detail come in there. All looking good. I've come across the curtain a little bit with a B brush, which I shouldn't have. So toggle back to X, just wipe down the curtain, get the curtain back to its natural lighting. That's looking smart. Shift control E flattens it. Control S puts it back into Lightroom. Come back into Lightroom and the saved image will pop in in a few seconds. Here we go. So it's coming as number 11 there. And then we just give that a light bump in Photoshop and bang, we're done. It's ready to roll out. Shift Control E, export out to your folder. So I'll just uh, drop that down. So that's what we've ended up with. We started off originally with the ambient shot, which was that. So you can see it's come an awful long way on those net curtains, looking a whole lot better. Um, much more realistic. You've got an impression of cars and a bit of a wall and a tree and a house over the road. That's exactly how it looks to your eye. That's how it should look. Jobs are good. So for this example, I wanted to show you one um, for blinds. The main difference with blinds is it's very difficult to use a repair shot because you've got the darker components in there. And while it's good for the view through the blinds, if you get it creeping onto the blinds themselves, it looks absolute rubbish. So uh, it's a good idea if you can just to get the flash shot correct in camera before you bring it into the editing. Now I've deliberately brought you one where I've got it wrong and I'm going to use this one to show you how to recover it so that you can see how it can work. So I've got my three shots. So this is an ambient shot and this is uh, shot at uh, 0.3 of a second on 7.1. Uh, we're at 14 millimeters on a 320 ISO. 
Um, uh, this is shot on a Canon 5D with a 1124 um, lens on it. Um, this next shot is the flash shot. It's terribly yellow. You've got a really orange floor, an orangey table, orangey furniture. You've got magnolia walls. You've got cast going everywhere. It's an absolute nightmare. And then I uh, put shot 15 up at the top here. We've got the window pull. It's nice and bright at the top. It's too dark at the bottom. It's not really got enough punch in it. And on the back of that, it's barely usable. We'll just about get away with it. So I need to do a bit of work on these before we throw them into Photoshop. So we'll go back to the flash shot for a moment. This is way too yellow. So I'm just gonna get the uh, white balance tool, click on a bit of ceiling that I know is white. That's much closer to how it should look. So we'll go with that. That's actually looking okay. <clears throat> Excuse my throat. Um, we'll go to the window pull shot. Um, this is too bright on the top and too dark on the bottom so down near the window sills here now down by this candle and these bits and pieces is too dark so if we drop the highlights down boost the shadows up um, punch the whites up and the blacks down we get a bit more kick in the view through it put a little bit of clarity and some dehaze in there and then bump the exposure up then we'll get to a point where it's looking pretty good by comparison it's still too yellow so i want to uh, take the slider back a bit and bring it back to about there i should think that's looking pretty good there and that's about right for what we want going on in the window so if we open these three uh, so click on them so alt click on the three images that we want to use alt p e o o open them as layers in photoshop uh, Photoshop's not open, so we're so opening it from scratch, so it'll take uh, a little bit longer. Sorry about that. If you can just bear with it while it comes good. Okay, it's just about to load the photos in, and we'll get the window shot first. Then we've got the uh, flash and then the ambient. So first thing I want to do is do a quick 50-50 uh, flash ambient blend on it and so to do that we'll take the luminosity mask or put uh, the ambient layer into luminosity mode and then we'll do a 50 50 mask with the layer below so that's our 50 50 flash ambient blend gone on and then we'll take the window pull layer up to the top we'll take the blend mode to darken that's there and we'll put a alt and click on the mask to bring a hide all mask and then we'll just make sure that our foreground color on our brush is you can toggle it on the x here we want it white on the foreground color we've got a brush at 600 at full flow and we just bring that window straight in like that looking good happy days and I deliberately go over too much on it so it's got some shadow around it where it shouldn't have and to show you how to correct it so you switch your foreground color over to black and just sweep across there and you can take that back out again that's looking pretty good just down there is looking good just off the bottom a little bit that's looking smart and just down this wall here jobs are good un. right okay so shift uh, control and E to flatten the layer, control S to put it back into Lightroom. And it's coming back in any second. There we go, we're back in. And we'll give it a, a light bump. Here we go, bang. The oranges are a little bit bright, so just to my taste, um, just drop the oranges down a little bit. There you go, drop those down by 25, and that's looking about perfect. So shift control E to save, job done. That's that one complete. I'll uh, take that out just so you can have a look at it for a couple more seconds. Well, thanks for watching and I hope this video was of some practical benefit to you. I will at some point do a video on advanced window pulls. There are some further refinements that you can do to them to make them even better. And uh, if you have any queries, by all means, uh, drop me an email to centurionphotography.oxen at gmail.com. Bye for now.